mail will be reviewed in the Dell XPS 15 9570. And no, the review is not an hour long. It'll be less than 10 minutes, but I have tagged on all my other videos at the end of this review, gaming reviews, content creation reviews, undervolting, everything you need to know about this. So if you want to see the real performance of this laptop, I will leave time code so you can forward to that later on. This video is brought to you by my Patreon page. If you like my content and you want to be a champ and support the channel, head on down to my Patreon page and become a patron. Links are in the description. The Dell XPS 15 has been pretty much my laptop for the last two years. It's the laptop that most suited my needs. I think it's been the best premium 15 inch laptop for the last few years. So now there's a new model the 9570 with 8th generation Intel 6 core CPUs. And there's a whole lot of these laptops coming out with these 8th generation 6 core CPUs. So will it retain its crown as the best 15 inch premium laptop? Well, let's find out. Now it looks very familiar. It's exactly like the last XPS 15 model, except they've changed the color now. This is a new like platinum sort of pewter color. It's very nice. It does make it look a bit more updated. With just that color change, it's actually quite amazing. It does, of course, have a new motherboard because it has a new chipset in there, new display, and definitely those speakers are new. The sound is really good on this one. Not to mention all the new internals it has. It starts at 999 US, and this fully loaded one here is 2899 US. In Australia, this same model will cost you $3,099, and in the UK, it'll probably cost more or less the same amount of pounds as it does US dollars. Now, of course, you can get many configurations. You can get configurations without a graphics card. You can get configurations with a small battery, a two and a half inch hard drive. You can get i5 CPUs, i7, i9s, and also you can get the GTX 1050 Ti. But this model here has an i9-8950HK CPU, 32 gigabytes of 2,666 megahertz DDR4, one terabyte SSD, a 4K touch display. It's an IGSO panel, 100% Adobe RGB. There also is a full HD option and that is not touch. And the graphics are powered by a GTX 1050 Ti with four gigabytes of RAM and a 97 watt hour battery. Looking at it, it's the same design you know and love. Premium CNC machined aluminium, that new platinum color really does make it look a bit more modern. The build quality is really good. The fit and finish is also good. When you open it up, you get that carbon fiber deck and that infinity edge display that everyone's doing now, but they were the first ones to do that. So it's still bang on, looks very modern and the build quality is right up there. Now this would compete with the MacBook Pro, Aero 15, Razorblade 15 inch or an MSI GS65. I'd say the Razorblade and the MSI are sort of more gamer. The Aero 15 does have an option for 100% Adobe RGB display and also calibrated by X-Ray. So I would say the Aero and the MacBook Pro would be its closest competitors, being more of a content creation premium 15 inch laptop. But forget about the MacBook Pros for now. Wait until the refresh and I will be comparing it to the Aero 15 X very soon. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. And if you like these videos, please give me a thumbs up or tell me I'm a knob down there in the comments. It comes in at 17 millimeters thick, weighs four pounds, 1.8 kilos. That's the starting weight and that's with the small battery. If you get the fully loaded one with the touch display, it's 4.5 pounds and two kilos. That's with the big battery. So it is a small premium package that houses very powerful hardware. And it's pretty much one of the smallest 15.6 inch laptops going around. You can actually fit it in a 13 inch sleeve. And the great thing about this being the same as the last generation XPS 15 is you get all the ports. So the left hand side you have USB 3.1, HDMI 2.0 now, Thunderbolt 3, with four lanes, headphone microphone combination jack. On the right hand side you have the power indicator buttons and lights. USB 3.1 Type A and a full size SD card slot, which is very fast too. It reads my cards at 150 megabytes per second, and that's actually the speed of my card. It does stick out a little bit, but at least it has it there. So thank God for that. Now I haven't actually been told anything about the sound being upgraded, but the sound is really good. Max Audio Pro 2 times 2 watt speakers, movies sound good. It's not up to the MacBook Pro level in terms of sound, but they are very good speakers on this now. I'm very happy with them. 
The keyboard is the same, feels exactly the same. It's going to be personal preference with keyboards, but I don't think there's anyone that's going to hate this keyboard. It's got a nice amount of travel. I do like it. And the trackpad just makes it very usable. One of the best Windows trackpads, pretty much Microsoft. This trackpad on this XPS 15 and maybe some Lenovo trackpads. They're the only trackpads that I can probably edit video with. Something like the Aero 15X, I could not edit video with that trackpad. So it makes it very usable as a day-to-day -day laptop, which is not something to sneeze about. Those little things do matter and add up. When it comes to displays, they don't get any better than this. When people say that this has a gorgeous display, they're not lying. When you see this display, you'll be blown away. Now I'm talking about the 4K 100% Adobe RGB display, 400 nits of brightness, so it is brighter now. It has a new reflective coating and actually uses less power. So that's fantastic. There's not much more I can say about this display. Viewing angles are superb. The clarity is outstanding. Everything about this display is top draw and you won't find one better great for a content creator it's a touch screen as well they also have a full hd model i don't think it's matte anymore but it does have an anti-reflective coating on that as well with that full hd display you will get killer battery life so pick which one's appropriate for you when it comes to the battery you have two options you have the 97 watt hour battery which is usually what you'll get with 4k you also have the small battery and that's like if you've got the hard drive model or sometimes you can actually get it without the hard drive and still have the small battery this xps 15 now supports connected standby which is basically intel's way of trying to make it like a phone like you close it it's still connected to the world but it's in a really low power state and then you open it up it should instantly resume the last xps 15 did not support that and the battery life is absolutely out of this world for a 4K display. The last XPS 15, I'll get six, seven hours battery. This one, seven, eight, I'm getting battery runs in excess of 10 hours sometimes. Now that will depend what you're doing, but for a 4K display, that just blew my mind. And you can have a look at these battery runs here. The battery life is class leading for a 4K display and even the Aero 15, Full HD display did not have as good as battery life as this 4K XPS 15. So that just blew my mind. And I can say now it has all day battery life. Now if you get the full HD version, it's just going to be even better again. So these eight generation CPUs are very power efficient along with displays that use less power and a big battery equals great battery life. When it comes to performance, you can check out the videos at the end of this video to really see how it performs. It is the only laptop I've been able to play Cineform 8K footage at full in Premiere. That i9 really sings. It does make a difference. You're going to be playing pretty much any game 60 frames per second on high settings 1080p and it has heaps of power. Now you will get some thermal throttling when you're gaming when you're loading gpu and cpu together but it doesn't really affect the performance in terms of gaming and when you're content creating it's not really an issue because you're usually using either the cpu or the gpu and i was getting the fastest render times with this xps 15 like 10 percent faster than say the aero 15x with the i9 if you're thinking of going with the i5 i would probably get the last generation xps 15 if you're thinking of going that way but these eighth generation six core parts i7 or i9 they are fantastic and it makes this laptop a powerhouse and if you want to know more about performance check out the reviews at the end of this video now when it comes to upgradability you can upgrade the ram ssd hard drive you can replace the battery you can even replace the wi-fi card if you want so that is great so that means you can get a lower spec model and then upgrade it later if you're talking is the i9 worth it i have to say for me I would say it is worth it but if you get the i7 you'll be very happy with that the performance is great either way but at least you have the option to go for a lower spec model and then upgrade most of the parts later that's fantastic so in conclusion i really do love this laptop it's up top of my list now for what i need personally being a content creator and using a laptop day in day out it's just very usable and that's what tips it over the edge to me from the Aero 15. The Aero 15X is a spec head's dream and a gamer's dream, but that's not me. 
I'm more of a content creator and I prefer just those small things, the usability of day-to-day usage, the great trackpad and keyboard, better battery life. It feels more premium to me and I do like the 4K display better. So for me, I would say this is at the top of the list of the 15-inch laptops, but if you were more a gamer, you probably would want to go with the Aero 15. So you want to factor in support as well. Are the other vendors' support as good as, say, Dell or Apple? I don't really think so. The only minor criticism of this laptop is it will throttle if you load the GPU and CPU. Check out all the reviews at the end of this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And there are a lot of 8th generation laptops coming soon, so how long will it be on top of the list? We will soon see when we get the other 8th generation 15-inch laptops in. So until next time, tally ho. Tell me it's not true. No, that is unbelievable. 8K footage, full. It's playing it back. Woo! Let's go, baby. Tally ho there, champs, and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be talking about the Dell XPS 159570 when it comes to content creation. I'm going to touch on some 3D video editing and Lightroom to see how it performs for a content creator. Now, if you like these type of videos, make sure you slap that like button and give me a sub because if no one likes these things, I won't do them. But if people like them, I'll continue to do them. So I would appreciate that. What makes this great for content creation is this 4K display. It is phenomenal. The best display on a laptop. We're talking 100% Adobe RGB, 4K, gets super bright, color accurate. It's everything you want as a content creator. So first of all, we'll just talk about 3D and sorry if I haven't got back to you from all the questions. I'm getting so many questions. It's like unbelievable. Thanks for leaving comments. I will get to them in the fullness of time, but I have a lot to get through. So let's just talk about 3D for now. So this is SpecView Perf 13. It's a brand new benchmark. They used to have benchmarks a while ago, but this is their new one. And if we just have a look here, we can see the scores. Now, I don't know why it says 1060p. I'm gonna run this test again, but just for now, if you wanna test your laptop against this, just download this benchmark. I'll leave it in the uh, comments and you will see that it covers 3DS Max, you know, Maya, a lot of 3D applications. And from what I could see, it performed very well with very complex models pretty much beyond what most people will do with 3D. So I think it's gonna perform very well with 3D. There were some really complex models where it slowed down a bit. We're talking full on big models, like, you know, the internals of a human, like the shoulder, the bones, the veins and stuff like that. Like the models are really complex. So this will handle 3D, no doubt. Just check this benchmark out. You can check it against your laptop. I'm sure it handles it very well, but you know, people that use 3Ds, some people might want to go with the Dell Precision because you're going to be able to get those Quadro drivers, which will make, you know, some 3D programs perform very well. So let's see how it does with video editing now. So we'll open up Premiere Pro and what I can tell you without a doubt, after editing the last three videos with this XPS 15, I edit 4K content is it just laughs at 4K. Just like the Aero 15X that laughed at 4K, just believe me, it just smashes 4K. This is a project with high resolution photos. We're talking 36 megapixels from a D800. We're talking color correction. We're talking full raw footage here. So you can see it's just scrubbing through this, no problems. You can see the color correction there. This is 4K content and it is just plowing through that like butter, scrolling through it like butter, as you can see there, no problems, and it's playing through these high-resolution photos without a hinder whatsoever. Look at it, it's just smooth. This is at full. Look for the green marker just underneath the preview window there. When that goes yellow, you're dropping frames, but this won't drop frames with 4K content. It just smashes it. it can play multiple streams 4K. No problems with 4K whatsoever, and this is color corrected and everything, and it will play it back. So let's do something a bit harder. Let's try some 6K. So this is red footage. <laughs> it's from the red website. So you can go to red and download this footage if you want. Um, 
This is 6K, okay? This is raw straight from the camera. So it's not uncompressed, it's raw. We're playing it full now. And you can see I'm scrolling through it. And yeah, it's not scrolling quite smoothly. It is at full at the moment. And you would not expect even a high-end machine to be able to scrub through this at full, even like a full-on workstation. My 10-core um, desktop does not scroll through this at full, uncompressed, sorry, compressed footage. It won't do it. So it's no surprise to you when you play it, it's not going to play through. You can see the yellow there for the frame dropped indicator, and you can see that it won't be able to play it. So let's put it on um, half. Uh, let's go back, put it on half. And if, I wouldn't expect it to play that half either. So you can scrub there and you can see it half. It's actually not too bad. You can see it's scrubbing there. Let's see if we can play it at half. Um, there we go. Playing it. Oh, my God, at half? Are you kidding me? There's no way. No way. No. Ah, there you go. Yeah, even my, like, workstation can't do half it would play for a little bit nah you cannot edit raw footage at half like but i actually think that you could probably edit this at half like we'll put it on quarter and it looks fantastic at half or even quarter because it is at the end of the day 6k content so let's scrub at quarter okay we're scrubbing at quarter and we'll see if we can play back at quarter there's no way I'll be very surprised because even the arrow, I think that needed to go to one eighth to play that raw. Oh my God, it played that quarter. Wow. Anyway, let's go to 8K footage. You can play that quarter. I'm happy with that. That is amazing that you can even just play that quarter and you'll be able to edit even at half. It'll be able to do it. But let's try some 8K footage. So 8K, it's scrolling quite easily. No, I've no, I've got to set that to full. Sorry about that. No, no wonder it's scrubbing so easy. Let's set that to full. Okay, let's set it to full and we'll scrub. And you can see there, okay, it is a bit choppy at full. You would expect that. It is 8K content. A big workstation won't do it at full. So let's play it. You're not going to be playing back 8K content at full. Okay. And that last footage was 6K. I may have said it was uh, 8K. No, it is 6K. So I apologise for that. So this is at full 8K. Let's put it to half. Let's go up to half. Where it should be the second one. Duh. Uh, yeah, okay. So half, it's actually scrubbing okay now. It's actually nice scrubbing at half. That's nice and smooth. I wasn't expecting that to be able to play you know, scrub at half with um, 8K footage. Let's see how it plays. Holy cow, at half. You're kidding me. Now, you really need a big workstation to do this at half. It's going to start, yeah, there you go. It starts dropping frames at the end. I mean, you need like a $10,000 14-core beast to be able to play at half, like raw footage 8K. So... Yeah, let's change it to, but you can see it still scrubs good at half, so we'll change it to quarter and we'll see how we go there. Hello, let's change it to quarter. That's the one, finally get there. All right, quarter, 8K. Let's see how it is, scrubbing nicely at quarter. I'm happy with that. It's probably editable at that um, quarter there. Um, have a look, quarter, it's playing back 8 K footage a quarter. I think the gigabyte arrow would play it back at one eighth. And this is the difference I think the i9 makes. To be fair to the gigabyte arrow and the i7, it wasn't running in dual channel memory, but I don't think it will make that much of a difference. But that's just amazing that you can play that at quarter. So let's see some Cineform. So I've uncompressed this 8K footage and we'll see how it performs with Cineform now. We'll uncompress that footage there. And you can see it's scrubbing at full. This is 8K footage at full. It's scrubbing through that like butter. And this is what you do. You uncompress your footage to Cineform or ProRes or something like that. 
it'll really run like butter. So let's have a look here. Scrolling. Oh, here we go. Let's see if we can play back. This is 8K at full. I see it, but I don't believe it. 8K at full. It is playing it back. All of it. No. Tell me it's not true. No. That is unbelievable. 8K footage. Full. It's playing it back. Unbelievable. So you can edit 8K footage with this i9 and the XPS 15. Wow. That is amazing. Yes, you have to uncompress the footage, but even with the footage raw 8K, you could edit at quarter. And I would say, you know, if you're a thrill seeker and you don't mind a bit of choppiness, you could edit it at half even. Um, and have a look here. This is indeed 8K. So you can see there, I'm not lying, this is full on 8K footage and it just played through that at full. That is amazing that a laptop can do that. The Gigabyte Aero couldn't do that. So let's have a look at some Lightroom now. Let's see how fast it imports these photos. And that's one thing that's great about this laptop. You already know about the 4K display, 100% Adobe RGB and the performance we're getting from this i9. But not only that, it has an SD card slot, which not a lot of laptops have these days, a full-size SD card slot. So, you know, I've been taking all these photos with a D800, so they're like 36 megapixel, I think it is, and they're raw photos. So they're raw, they're full-size raw, and also we have some um, JPEGs as well because I shoot raw and JPEG together. So this is raw and JPEG. They're like 40 megabytes. That's unbelievable how big they are. So when you import into Lightroom, it'll render the previews as well. So we'll see how fast, <coughs> excuse me, we'll see how fast it renders those previews. I'll just bring up the Intel gadget so we can see what the CPU is doing, how fast it is, how hard it is. And usually I would say go with the i7 because it's best bang for buck and there's not going to be much difference, you know. I used to say that with the i5, i7, you know. You get value out of the i5, but now... This i9, I was getting a minute faster than the Aero 15 with the i7 in rendering, a minute faster. I undervolted it. I got another minute. So it was nearly like 10 to 20% faster just with the i9. Now, it was 10% faster than the Aero, but then when you add the undervolt, it was another 10, nearly 10%. So it works out nearly 20% faster, but of course you can undervolt the i7 in the actual uh, Aero 15, so you probably get that 10% back. But still, a minute faster is just amazing. The i9 really screams, it really does perform, and look at it, look how fast it's um, rendering these previews of these, you know, 40 megabyte raw files, raw photo files. Of course, there's some JPEGs in there, but it's just... Like, this used to really take a long time. I remember in laptops, it used to take for ages. So it just shows you now we can edit 8K footage on a laptop, which you would never even do on a desktop before. You needed some super-duper workstation. And now you can do it on your laptop. So this XPS 15, not only has it got great performance for a content creator, it has the killer screen, it has all the ports you want. It's super fast. And you can see the, I won't forward it. I'll keep this import going. So we'll see how long this import goes. So how many photos? Just over 100 there. So 120 or whatever it was. But um, usually I would walk out and come back, you know, 20 minutes later. But this isn't going to take 20 minutes. You can tell it's going to render these out very fast. And what are we? 4.3 gigahertz. And what? There's 136 photos. And... If we have a look at the package temperature, we're just over 80 degrees. So it is hammering and I would expect that this would be a fair bit faster on this i9 given that it's pretty much faster with everything else. So this is a really great content device, content creator's device, should I say. Um, I'm really happy with it and it also games too. So for me, this is perfect because it does all the content creation things great. It's very usable as a laptop because there's a great trackpad. I will mention that I can actually edit with this trackpad. There's not many uh, laptops I can edit with the trackpad. 
And let's have a look at these previews. Let's see how fast it opens and closes. See how fast that was? That was amazing. Let's open and close these previews. Boom. Just opens them so fast. Closes them. Let's have a look here at this. It just, that flew. That was so quick. I mean, I was just rambling on and it's already ready. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just taking it back now. So what am I doing here? So we're in Lightroom. Uh, should we do a quick little edit or not? Yeah, we'll actually see how fast it goes through the previews first. So, yep, okay, boom, it opens them straight away. You know, sometimes it used to take 100 years to load previews even on a desktop, so it's amazing. Boom, look at that, instant. Let's load another one, boom, instant. Wow, this thing really flies. Boom, that's amazing because... Usually you, what you have to do is actually it's better to have your project or even your video files on another hard drive to make it fast, but this is actually doing it, rendering those previews that fast, opening and closing them with the actual content on the same drive as your Windows drive, which is suboptimal. You really want them on another like external SSD or something, but this can actually do it on a drive that fast. That is amazing. I think that's the power of the i9 there quite amazing so let's do some editing hey we're going to go into the develop module we'll do some editing uh what are we doing here all right yeah okay get lost shut up okay so yeah it's doing a tutorial because i've just freshly installed this so it may take a little bit a bit, bit longer to load up stuff but anyway let's do some quick edits here so I like to see my highlights and shadows there. We'll just bring back those shadows there to make that black look nice and black. Um, we'll make the whites a bit wider. We'll try and blow out that background. Maybe no, we'll just yeah, we'll just push it to the edge, like as bright as it can be. Bring out these photos, and this will probably be the thumbnail for this um, this video that I'm doing now. It looks like a pretty good photo for a thumbnail. This, oh, I didn't want to mess around with the shadows. I wanted to bring the blacks down, not the shadows. But we'll bring the shadows down a bit too. Um, yep. And, yeah, that looks nice like that. But as you can see, as soon as I do the edits, it's not lagging or anything. It's just instantly doing it. It just updates the preview straight away because this really performs well in Lightroom. I wouldn't expect that it wouldn't. Um, it's amazing how fast this is. Like, you, if you've used Lightroom before, you get used to lag every now and then, but this is just like butter. It's super smooth through these previews. Let's try a brush. We'll try a brush and then we'll wrap it up because this video is going for way too long. But if you appreciate these things, please give me a like there. We'll just try a brush. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Get the brush and let's. See if we can, um, that bit there where the blacks are crushed too much. Let's see if I can bring those blacks back a bit. So I'll just use the brush and we'll um, not add. We're going to add some black. No, we don't want to add black. We want to remove it. But we'll just resize that brush. And there we go. Boom, look at that. Instant, no lag, nothing. How cool is that? So... I hope I've covered enough of this. I don't want the video to lag on for too much longer, but um, as you can see, the brush worked instantly. The previews were very fast. It rendered it in, like imported so very fast. And the edits, when we just uh, done the edits in the um, develop module, it worked just like super fast. It was like instant. There was no lag. So I think you will agree that this is a great content creator's device. It is a fantastic device. I really like it. I can highly recommend it for a content creator and it can game too. What more do you want? It's a premium package. I can use the trackpad. It's usable. I can edit photos with the trackpad. I can actually edit video with the trackpad. I only like need a Surface products, Mac, and this is the only ones I can do that. If I try to do it on something like the Aero, there's no way I could use the Aero trackpad to do this sort of thing. And as you can see, look, the brush works instantly. There's no lag. So 
Hope I covered it all for you there. I've really worked hard the last three days. I appreciate a like and a sub. Um, Until the next one, guys, I'll catch you. Tally ho. All right, tally ho there, champs. Now let's see how this Dell XPS 15 9570 games. Now this model I have here has the 8th generation i9 and a GTX 1050 Ti Max-Q with 4 gigabytes of RAM. So let me start by saying if you're a gamer and you're a gamer first, you should get a gaming laptop. This is not a gaming laptop, although this thing can game. Don't worry about that, it can game. We're talking pretty much any title over 60 frames per second at high settings, 1080p. Just for reference, the last XPS 15 could play any title just about over 60 frames per second at medium settings. So this is a step up from the last generation XPS 15. Now, of course, obviously there are some titles where it won't do 60 frames like DSX Mankind Divided. I always use that because it's a system crusher. But by and large, any game, 60 frames plus, 1080p high settings. So that is phenomenal when you just think about that in such a small and premium package. Now, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing. I do really comprehensive reviews. I don't just tell you specs and this and that. I really do go in for a deep dive and I appreciate it if you subscribe and give me a like there. I do have a lot of cool stuff on the way. So stay tuned for that. So we know the specs. What about the display? We have a 4K display with 400 nits of brightness, 100% Adobe RGB. And what I would say about this display is it amplifies whatever you're looking at. It is a phenomenal display, even at 1080p. And I did actually test out wait to the end make sure you watch to the end because you'll see that i test out at 1600 and 4k as well but anyway the content looks great on this i don't have any issues with it ghosting or stuff like that when you game if you're used to a high refresh monitor you're going to notice but if you've only viewed a 60 hertz monitor you're not going to notice any difference it will look fine gaming the actual sound on this is actually pretty good too. I may, I think they may have improved the sound because it actually sounds pretty good. You can hear it over the fans, of course, because this isn't that loud. Like compared to some other laptops, especially gaming laptops and even the Aero 15, this is much quieter than the Aero 15. But that's the thing with this. As I said, if you want a gaming laptop, get a gaming laptop with a high refresh rate display and etc. Because anything over 60 frames per second is virtually wasted. All you want is 60 frames per second to match the hertz of the display. And this laptop easily does that. So I've already demonstrated that it doesn't thermal throttle when you load that CPU up. And actually, when I benchmarked it on Geekbench and Cinebench, it was like off the charts, like faster than any other laptop I have tested, period. But what about when you load the GPU as well? How's the cooling? Or do you want the good news or the bad news? Bad news is it does thermal throttle when you load that GPU as well. But the good news is it doesn't really matter because it still plays over 60 frames per second at high 1080p. And I was quite surprised that when it did thermal throttle, the performance degradation wasn't that bad. I was definitely expecting it would drop under 60 frames per second, but it didn't, even at high settings. So bear in mind, with these benchmarks, I'd, I'd done it when the clock speed's reduced on the CPU to make sure that you get the right scores. These are worst case scenario scores. You can actually get more frames per second and I'll explain that later on in this video. But the temperatures will creep up to up to 100 on the CPU and it will throttle down. Undervolting doesn't help, but thankfully, I didn't get massive like drops in frame rates, so the game didn't like have big stutters or anything like that. It seemed to be very linear. Although the performance was decreasing, it wasn't by a lot, and it also has that much headroom, it's still able to stay over 60 frames. That magic marker there at high settings 1080p. And as you'll see with my footage, I'll always try and include it where the clock speed has dropped, and you'll see that the frames still stay high. So anyway, let's get to the benchmarks. So all these benchmarks are at high gta 5 is at very high but all the rest are at high 1080p so gta 5 we get 83.6 frames per second dsx mankind divided 45 frames per second now that's the system killer there most games will be over 60 frames per second battlefield 1 62.7 frames per second fortnite which is obviously the best game ever invented you just ask the bunter from box hill he loves it as much as he loves greeks and there you go fortnite 76.7 frames per second and most importantly PUBG 76.8 frames per second so you can see this thing can game and compared to last year's XPS 15 you're able to play at high settings now instead of medium 
And if you compare it to something like the Aero, which is more of a gaming laptop, I would say, with its 144Hz display, that has a GTX 1070 Max-Q. And where this XPS 15 generally plays between 70 and 80 frames per second, just remember these benchmarks are worst case scenario. You will get up to 90 and sometimes even 100 frames per second. But the Aero 15 will do 80 to 100 and sometimes over 100 depending on the game. So that's the difference there. So if you're a gamer, clearly go with a gaming laptop. I like the Dell XPS 15 because of its usability, battery life, display, premium package, and it can game too, so I can't complain. I'm not a gamer first. For me, this is more of a video editing machine, content creation, but it's also fantastic that I can use it for gaming anytime I want, and I won't be compromised. I'll be playing at high settings, 1080p, and I'll get great enjoyment out of it gaming, without getting deafened, by the way, because it's not as loud as gaming laptops. So that's it. Watch the videos now, keep a close eye on the frequency of the CPU, keep a close eye on the thermals and look at the frame rates. You will see, even when it does throttle down that CPU, the frame rates stay high. I don't know why. Sometimes it was even getting more frames when it was throttling. I don't understand. If someone could enlighten me, let me know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you're new around here. Got a lot more videos on this beast coming up. I also have a couple other laptops in the house, so stay tuned for those. And until next time, guys, tally ho. All right, we have the temps up here. Have a look. Um, we're at 88 degrees on the CPU, about 80 degrees on GPU. We are playing at high settings now. So this is 1080p high settings. Um, if I was to talk about the last XPS 15, it could play pretty much any title 60 frames per second at medium settings. This will play pretty much any title. There are some titles that won't, like DSX Mankind Divided, it will play at 50 frames or whatever. But pretty much any title 60 frames per second at high settings. So it is an improvement over the last XPS 15. So, you know. Even though it does throttle, and I will play this until it throttles, it doesn't really affect the frame rate. And anything over 60 frames per second is really superfluous, especially if you're playing on the screen. If you're outputting to a monitor, different story, but if you're playing on the actual screen to get high settings 1080p at over 60 frames per second all the time it'll always be over 60 frames per second it won't really dip below that i have to say i'm very happy with the gaming performance would i like that it didn't throttle at all in actual fact it's taken a while to throttle maybe i actually won't throttle on this game that much because ah it doesn't have much cpu load that's why Look at the framage. Oh, lovely. Yes, on GTA 5 it did throttle more because it was using more of the CPU. Actually, we're using more of the CPU now. Yes, you can indeed see now it is throttling. But look at the frames. 90 frames per second throttling. What? What? It just doesn't compute with me. It's weird. I'm throttling now and I'm getting 90 frames per second why it was actually more than when it was running at full speed so even though it does throttle i wouldn't worry about it you're getting over 60 frames 1080p high settings i mean what do you got to complain about it still games like a champ it games better than the last xps 15 it's not going to game as good as the aero 15 well that's got a gtx 1070 in it and if you're a gamer this is not a gaming laptop, you know, look elsewhere if you're a gamer. But it still games like a champ. Have a look at the frames I'm getting. Wow, I cannot complain. I really seriously cannot go, oh, I've got to get this car. Let's get in. I love this car. see if we can make it throttle a bit anything under 2.9 is considered thermal throttling really it's just balancing the power t between the gpu and cpu but let's see if we can get that to get hot enough to back off a little bit I 
once it gets over about 90 degrees it'll start backing off but there we go it's starting to throttle but look at the frame they have dropped slightly but I'm still playing at over 70 frames per second again you can see the throttle in there it's throttling at 2.2 gigahertz but the frames are not really affected don't know why that is um, I would expect it to really drop under 60 frames but it doesn't so that is what it is I think you'll like it it can game like a champ ciao all right all right all right uh, XPS which, 15 which, 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 what? which one the two in one or no no this is the XPS 15 9570 so this has the oh, right. six core i9 um, and it has a GTX 1050 Ti 4 gb and we're running that CPU in the 90s. We are running it in the 90s, but I'm getting a crack in 85. Yeah, yeah, oh, I got a job! Middle, oh, no, I got a job! But in, gonna... middle, in middle of winter too, mind you. Yeah, oh, that's like... all right. That's, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it keeps you warm. Actually, the CPU's gone down to 74 now. Oh, the, sure. um, the frames have gone down to 60 hey, frames per second. Oh. Oh, just under over 50. Oh, getting a big drop now. But um, once we land, I know this is normal for laptops. It, I don't know why. It just does this with these eighth generation uh, CPUs. Once you hit the ground, the frames come back up. I'm going to... Oh, one of our teammates is dead already. Okay, so I am actually recording at the same time. So oh, there you go, man. That would be oh, shit. extra stress on the CPU there. So I'm getting over 60. This is at ultra, by the way. I'm getting over 60 frames per second ultra settings, 1080p. Oh, I'm getting 70. How good is that? I'm not even concentrating on the game. We're running at 2. Oh, you've got you've got all the goodies, haven't you? Got to go somewhere Dude. else. Anything there? I got. Oh, oh yeah, I've got an AK if you need it. Uh yeah. I'll take an AK. Oh, mate. Yeah, take the AK. Is, I've got this a shotgun. Is on, oh, who's that? Is that you? I don't, no, no. Okay. We're getting shot We're at. Come in here and um, get the AK. I'm getting 70 frames here. per second at ultra settings. Oh, AK. Watch it, watch it. Is that it shooting at you? No, no, no. I think they're just shooting at okay. somebody who just died. Uh, what temperatures we got? It's hard to concentrate. <laughs> and um, play PUBG at the Hussey. At the Hussey, where it's yeah. all action, we're getting over three. It's not throttling at the moment. We're getting nearly three gigahertz, so that's right. So we're not actually throttling. We're getting 70 frames per second at ultra settings. Now, the last XPS 15 was. Are we going in? Are we going in? Oh, all right, let's go. I need a jacket. Oh, all right. Don't worry let's about do it the anyway. jacket. But the last XPS 15 used to do it at around. Uh, 70 frames per second PUBG, but it was at medium settings. This is at ultra settings, and I'm getting 80 frames per second at the moment. Wow. All right. It is a bit cramped, the keyboard, for me, because I'm used to a full-size keyboard, obviously. Oh, hello. Yeah. Did you see him? Did you see him? Yeah. Let's, let's mess him up, eh? Thank you. Whoa. Yeah, I can see the guy just outside the door. Yeah. If he comes in here, he's messy. I'm going to mess him up. Have I got a good name? No, I don't. I have. We'll chuck it through that door. Yeah. Oh, no, he must be coming around a different way now. Uh, oh, he's oh, coming in. He's doing the grief. He's doing the grief. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, I can see him. Yeah. I've got to keep the other guy busy too. Yeah, I don't want to go in because I've got no vest. But I'm no, still no, getting over. Se I'm still getting over 70 frames per second. Um, the CPU has throttled down a bit. But, Where is he? Where is he? I'll um, get him. No, no, no. He's gone to the other house now. He's gone to the Greek part of the building. Um, I'm still getting over 70 frames per second. Ultra 1080p. This is amazing. Quite amazing, actually. Um, but it is actually throttling under what the G, uh, CPU should do. So, oh, I don't know how I'm getting still 70 frames per second in Ultra. 
That's amazing. If I turn this to high, I'd be getting 80 plus frames per second. So this thing can boogie. This thing can boogie. Now I did have those concerns that it would throttle. Uh, where are these mingers? Oh, M16. And I was right. But it keeps on going back up to 3 gigahertz every now and then. So it's running at basically its stock. Yeah, it's 2.9 now. It's running at its stock. Oh, oh someone Fish. outside. Who was that? Not me, not me, not me. All right, are we going up? Come on, let's do it. Oh, oh how about behind us? Where? Oh, oh they're hide damn it. They're hiding in the room. All right, so that is the thermal capacity of this laptop. This is a 4K sample, by the way. That is what it is. I'm not happy that it does throttle, but at least it still keeps those 60 frames per second. So I can live with it because it's mainly for video editing, etc. But it still games well. So in the end, I'm happy. Right, tell you how. Now we're going to see how the XPS performs with a bit of undervolting. I'm going to talk about gaming later, but I'm going to concentrate on like all core bursts and actually see how much faster it is video editing, like actually rendering the scene. It actually gets better with this i9. It's actually really phenomenal. It's just blown away every laptop I've used in terms of Cinebench and um, even Geekbench. Like the scores are off the charts. So I'll put them up here. Now those scores are not undervolted, but we're gonna undervolt it now, see how much faster we can render. It already is the fastest laptop at rendering, but it does get better. I'll talk about gaming later. You just type in extreme utility, blah, 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 blah whatever, close enough. <laughs> uh, might wanna put Intel in front of that. Uh, Intel, yes, that's the one. Tuning utility, all right. Now I'm on my desktop at the moment, so yeah. I'm just doing that because I've got screen catcher software on this. And you just download it, install it. The same on a laptop. It shouldn't take long. It will ask you to actually restart. Restart, okay, I'll be back soon. All right, we have restarted and let's open Extreme Tuner. Do this, get your own risk and all this stuff. That's up to you if you wanna do it. Do not wanna participate in this. All right, so what you do, Oh, see, it's gonna give you this warning, so make sure you read it and you're fully aware of what you're doing. So all we do is we go to core voltage offset. Now, on the XPS 15, this will actually be on the left because this is a bigger screen, I guess, I don't know, whatever. But this core voltage offset is on the left and you just set how much millivolts you want out. I would say start at 100 and creep up from there. I have the i9, so the i9s will be the best because they're the cream in the crop. So I think that the i9 will be able to undervolt the most. And on this XPS 15, I can get 130 millivolts and that's stable. If I go any more, it'll crash. 130 is 100% stable there. It'll differ for each one. The i7s might not go as well, but then again, you could get lucky. You might be able to do 150. I've heard of that before. Then you just go apply and then you can save the profile too if you want. But that's it. That's all you have to do to undervolt. So let's see the result. Okay, now let's have a look at the thermals. Now, the benchmark has been running for long enough that, um, how long has it been running? Six minutes, okay. Long enough to just tell me that these temperatures will be stable. I'm gonna leave it on for longer and I will tell you if anything changes, but generally it's gonna stick here and it's gonna be stable. Now don't be fooled, that says it's throttled, okay? If you have a look here, see that massive spike at the start? That's when I turned the benchmark on and as soon as the fans kicked in, those temperatures went right down. So that ignore that throttling, that's just see there, the spike, it's the same spike right there before the fans kicked in. Once the fans kicked in, it has not throttled at all. We're talking three gigahertz, all core boost, so that's fantastic. So it's over the 2.9 gigahertz, which is its base speed. So if it's over 2.9, it is not throttling, and this is not throttling at all. Okay, thermal throttling, log, log. No, it's not throttling. Uh, this is CPU only test. That's just when the fans kick in, you get that little spike there. Where's the spike here? Spike, see, spike where it throttles. That's just until the fans kick in. Once the fans kick in, it will not throttle at all. So it doesn't throttle. This is another CPU test, 100% CPU usage, as you can see there. We're pulling 55, 56 watts, pretty much its power limit. So 
Um, yeah, it's really pushing it here. So we are going at 3.4. Um, you can hear the fans there. They keep on going up and down. So the fans aren't on max speed, but as you can see there, the package temperature we're getting is around, you know, mid-80s, low mid-80s, 81, whatever, up to 85. So it's not throttling, but have a look here. We're running at 3.45 gigahertz. And yesterday it was running at 3 gigahertz doing the same test. And that's because I've actually undervolted it. So I've used a minus 150 millivolts there, an offset. And you can just do that. You use the Intel Extreme Utility. You just go in here and you change the voltage core offset and I've changed it to minus 150 millivolts, which is a big undervolt actually. It's um, surprising it's very stable. Look, it's been going for 12 minutes now. It is stable at that, so be careful. You don't want to <laughs> take away too much millivolts there. Try it at 100 first if you're willing to do this, if you want to do this, but the difference is big. You know, going from three gigahertz to 3.5 nearly, 3.45, that's a big difference, especially if you're doing a long render. So undervolting makes a huge difference here. You're able to go at a lot higher clock speed for longer. And yeah, it's not overheating. You can probably hear the fans there. 83, 85 degrees, as I said. Um, yeah, very interesting that you can get that extra performance from undervolting. And we'll test that in gaming as well. Okay, let's get in here. So this is undervolted by uh, 130 millivolts. Now we'll see if it renders faster. Now people have asked me screen record when I do this. I'm not going to screen record while I'm benchmarking. That makes no sense. Anyway, what you can see here is look at the frequency. It's a lot higher with this undervolt of 130 millivolts. See, when I was rendering before, it would be around 3 to 3.3 gigahertz. Now we're getting up to 3.6 and sometimes beyond 3.6. So there's a significant improvement there just from that undervolt. We'll see what difference it makes in the time here. And temperature, where are we? Temp, 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 temp. Oh, here we go, 97 package temperature. So this is at its limits now, um, 3.5. That's still way ahead of what it was uh, stock, which was 3.5. 0 to 3.3 max and really it was sitting more like 3.1 around there so a big significant increase in the um, gigahertz there in the frequency so we'll see how much faster it renders so we have to beat nine minutes and nine seconds i think it is and i think we're going to beat that easily using the gpu as well so remember that we're still getting high frequencies with the gpu and oh stop 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 I missed out on a few seconds, right? three seconds, oh, stop. All right, so <laughs> that was probably below eight seconds. I'll have to have a look at the video. Eight seconds, eight minutes, sorry. So we shaved another minute off with that undervolt there, one minute. So this is on another planet now compared to any other laptop in terms of video editing, rendering. This i9 really does make a difference in that regard. We were using the GPU as well, the uh, Ultra HD graphics on the Intel, as well as the NVIDIA GPU. So it was putting on some heat into that um, heat spread there that shared between the GPU and CPU. So, and it was still going over three gigahertz during the whole render. So we're talking up to 3.5, 3.6, sometimes 3.3. So that is amazing, quite amazing how fast this renders. Shaved off another minute. So it's like nearly, you know, it's not 10%, but still, still, when you consider that the arrow does it in over 10 minutes, I think it's 11 minutes or something, I don't know. I'll put a graphic up here, but um, that is amazing. Wow, what speed. So as you can see there, undervolting is well worth it. Not only that, it actually saves you battery as well. So it's well worth doing. Just find a sweet spot where it's super stable. You're going to get faster renders going to get better battery life better gaming and on gaming actually here you can see i've actually underclocked the gpu the gpu um, frequency can go up and down but i've underclocked it by about 200 megahertz and i've undervolted by the 130 volts and what i can say is this i9 wants to boost all the time so 
any time that it gets in a like temperature range where it can start boosting again, it's going to boost. So even though you undervolt it, that means the temperatures come down and then it just wants to boost again. So it'll get hot and throttle. Now it doesn't throttle as much. It takes longer to throttle. And even though I've reduced the frequency of the GPU as well, so keeping it cooler, then the CPU just wants to spike up again because this i9 just goes off its choppers. It just wants to boost all the time. So it might be different with the i7, but... So the benchmarks were a little bit faster within the margin of error still, but under Volton is well worth it. So I think you should do it. And I'd actually like to know how to cap the frequency to 3 gigahertz. So if anyone knows, let me know. Undervolting, well worth it. And in the next one, I'll catch you. Ciao.